Du jour day book video. My name is Kimberly and I am delighted to be joined here today with the lovely Carol. Thank you Kimberly. And we just wanted to show you a sneak peek into our day books, see the various ways in which we've been playing with them over the past couple of weeks, and to give you some tips on how to use the system as a whole. And um, so Carol will chime in, show off her fabulous book, <laughs> and uh, and then of course the lovely Louis the Pug is here too, um, wearing beautiful pearls made by Carol. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just start by telling you a tiny bit about the book. So this is the Tranquility Du Jour Day book. So one of the things I wanted to start by showing was these darling tabs. So these tabs are actually Martha Stewart, put out by Avery. And I use them for the months, and then I also have one for the checklists. And then, Carol, what did you end up doing? Um, I also used them for the months, and I included one tab in the back for 2014. Ah, so you have a year ahead. ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you just cut that out of something else and taped it in. Yep, from an old calendar. And Perfect. Yep, have the year ahead and staggered the tab so I can see the year. Yeah. Yeah, and um, you did a ballpoint pen. Mm -hmm. I used a Sharpie, and they don't smear at all. They're really great. So um, these are great little tabs, and they came in the ephemera packet. They were in this. And, um, yeah, so in addition to the tabs, what I wanted to show was kind of the whole system around this book. So some of you are familiar with Tranquilology. It was an e-course that I put out last year, and throughout the e-course, I came up with kind of like a weekly planner where you really focus on your MITs, your most mm -hmm. important tasks, daily checklists, weekly checklists, and monthly checklists. So I enhanced those, even added some, and then that's what you'll find at the beginning. Let me go to my checklist tab. And so it starts here with our monthly checklist. So monthly checklist, these are the things we want to be doing every month. The idea is to really evoke tranquility in our everyday, and these are the tools which are fully outlined at the front. So we start with monthly checklist. Here are the monthly tranquility tips. So for example, at the very beginning of every monthly tranquility tip, number one is craft the month's dreams. And do you want to show your month layout? And then you can see how there's a space for crafting your month's dreams right in front. Oh, you want January? Yeah. Oh, My January spread. Yes, beautiful. Mm -hmm. So she has started to craft her month's dreams. So she would be able to check that off for January. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. And then we get into weekly checklists. And this is some things we want to do every week. It doesn't have to be on any particular day. Planning your week's MITs that I recommend we do on a Sunday night. However, whenever feels best. Soak in the tub is actually uh, mm -hmm. great to do daily. Um, taking a digital day off. My plan is for it to be Sunday in the new year. Clearing clutter, pinning a love note, buying or picking fresh flowers. We have peonies here today, which is a total treat. Taking an artist date, which is based on the fabulous work of Julia Cameron, who we got to see in New York, New York last City, month. Right. The or this month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so an artist date. Do you want to speak a little bit about an artist date and what that looks right. like? An artist date is one hour out of your week carved where it's time devoted exclusively to yourself. An opportunity to go to a museum, to a bookstore browse, to do something solitary as a way to refill the well with inspiration. Yeah. You know, the um, looking in a drugstore, I mean, there's so many ways. Going for a walk, you know, in a park, a local park. But the, the idea of doing it alone and really listening and being in touch with that silence and, and being aware of what's around you, you know, taking in taking in. Yeah. It's yeah. really, really great. It is so great. It's such an important piece of the work. And savor a green juice. Mm -hmm. That ideally is a daily, but I put it weekly because I didn't want to overwhelm people. And so then we get into the daily checklist. And this, 
you know, you have a daily checklist for every month and it's laid out number one through 31. And if you go back to the front where we have the tranquility tools on page 10 is, are your eight daily tranquility tools. Mm -hmm. So you have your morning routine, daily dress up. I just did a blog post on this. Uh, number three, mindful movement. So initially in tranquilology, I had yoga and meditation, which are so important. But for some people, it's running or jogging mm -hmm. or biking or dancing. Eat your veggies, of course. Number five, journal. Number six, goal review. So just making sure that every single day you're moving toward what you had set out for the beginning of the year of what you wanted to see unfold. Gratitude. So studies definitely show that people are more grateful or happier. And then your evening routine. And this is where I'm all about soaking in the tub, reading in bed for 30 minutes, and shutting down the smartphone. So those are your eight daily tranquility tools. And you have a checklist so that January 1st, I will go through and then hopefully check off everything. That's kind of my goal as I was writing my goals for 2013 is to get all my checklists. Because mm -hmm. there's something satisfying about checking the box. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, so that is kind of the system as a whole. And then, of course, we get into here's our month at a glance. Okay, so she had decorated hers, which was super cute. And, you know, putting in a page and then writing over it. And so I just kind of got started with mine. And so every month, put in kind of what are the big things that you want to see unfold for you that month. Then I used my paper clip with vintage, this is a vintage ribbon from New York City, tied around the paper clips. So that is to help me find January. And then we get into our week. So here's our week. Let me show you my upcoming week. So I've just started filling it in. And so at the top, this is where you put the places you need to be. This is where work would fall in, or getting kids to soccer appointments, or teaching a yoga class, things that are necessities, things that are obligated time constraints. Then we get into our to-dos, and then we get into our projects. So you'll see that once this gets filled in, there'll be lots of goodies in here to help keep us organized for the week. And then also we have little inspirational quotes. And then here is where you can write your most important tasks. So the things that you really want to make sure you get done that week. So is that something that you usually do on Sundays when yep. you look forward to the week? Yep, mm -hmm. Sunday night. And you know what's funny is I just read, um, there's this great ebook. It just came out actually today. And it's by the woman who wrote 168 Hours. Mm -hmm. And it's what most successful people do on the weekends. Oh, really? Yeah. And it's like, oh. I don't know, you can download it for just a few dollars. Because, mm -hmm. you know, she did the one before breakfast this summer. Right. And um, one of the things that she said is that, uh, you know, it's really important because a lot of people get Sunday night blues, right? Because mm -hmm. you're about to return to work on Monday morning. Yeah. And so the big thing mm -hmm. with that was to plan on Sunday night so that Monday morning... You don't kind of walk in and let other people or situations or emails determine what your priorities are mm -hmm. for the week. So I really like that. And that's actually been my plan. Typically, it's Sunday night. I sit down and I look through and I plan my week ahead. Mm -hmm. Great. And yeah. So that's kind of what the MITs are. And then ideally, you should only have three to five most important tasks. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can get a little out of control. You don't list all your to-dos. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about some of the added pieces that are in here. Okay. So, one thing, and this was Carol's idea, is the Wheel of Life. And you'll see at the bottom, on page 190, and you'll see at the bottom, there's to insert the date. Typically, I encourage people to do these seasonally. Mm -hmm. You know, so you may want to start one now. And... It's really interesting to just kind of look and see how happy are you with certain parts of your life. So we have creativity, spirituality, money, self-care, community, relationships, health, and career. And then so if you're not so happy, that would be a zero right in the center. And then the happier you are, it gets out to a 10. Somebody asked if they've ever, if I've ever seen like a perfectly balanced. Never. Mm -hmm. I, haven't, I haven't even seen a perfectly balanced like five in every area. Really? Yeah. So it's like, you know, usually it looks kind of like a bat or something, mm -hmm. you know, by the time people connect the lines. 
You know, what I really like that you've added here is the action steps. So oh, you yeah. can really focus on the areas that you'd like to increase. Right. So when you're feeling out of balance, you're not sure why exactly. And you can go to the wheel and find that area and then come up with some tactics, yes. you know, that you can incorporate into your, your day your week or your month. Yeah. It's such an important thing because sometimes you could look at this and you'd be like, oh, well, well, I'm a three here, I'm a two here, I'm an eight here. Mm -hmm. So it's like celebrate mm -hmm. where you're right. higher, mm -hmm. you know, and then become cognizant of, wow, I never really thought about spirituality or creativity and see what small steps you could do to increase those. Right. And self-care is so important. You know, if that area is lacking, to really pay attention because that affects so many other areas too. Absolutely. Yeah, no, so that's a mm -hmm. great point. The action steps is the critical piece. Right. Because the first part is kind of reflection and awareness, mm -hmm. and then it's like, so what do you do with that? Right, and you can do it seasonally, like you said, like every three months, yep. whenever you start your calendar. Yeah. Um, and then nice. the next kind of fun piece that was added, say on page 194, and then we also have it at the beginning, four pages nice. for inspiration. Have mm -hmm. you started doing anything with yours? Well, you know, I've started to collect images, and what I did was I set aside one page per season and oh, I, yeah. I took out my marker and I've already identified this one as winter so winter spring summer fall and then I'll fill them in you know probably along with the wheel of life kind of checking in mm -hmm. you know and seeing what I want to manifest for the next season the next season mm -hmm. perfect how about you yeah so I just put in something from the anthropology catalog oh. I always love their mm -hmm. images and then what I plan to do is write over it and, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll probably just kind of treat it like an art journal. Yeah, I'm going to collage, yeah, probably. Yeah, collage, you know, totally. Maybe some paint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, in the back, too, we have Savvy Sources. So these are some of my favorite work, lifestyle, mindful living, creativity, minimalism, style, and health reads. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're really good about providing Savvy Sources. Love with Savvy Sources. With your podcasts sources. and on your blog. Yeah, really instructive. And then the wish list of must-reads, mm -hmm. which is so important because, you know, there's always books that you're like, oh, you see it on Amazon or you see it in a bookstore or somebody mm -hmm. mentions it and you're like, oh, I want to read it. And you add it. Yep. And then in the back and in the front, for those of you who got the ephemera packets, there are the retro library card holders, which I thought were so fun. Mm -hmm. Show us what's in yours. So, so yeah, so I filled mine in with some of the Mix and Mingle cards, which are adorable for appointments Cute. with friends, some stickers that also come in the ephemeral packet. Um, I've added a piece of, piece of wood with some Japanese masking tape on it. So rather than taking the whole spool with me, yep. which I love. Which are kind of thick, yes. Right, I can have just a little piece of it, so. Yeah. And, um, I love that. Yeah. That's so great. That's so clever. <laughs> That's right. And um, some stars mm -hmm. for good days. And then I stuck some index cards for notes. Yeah. You know, or if I'm, um, you know, wanting to make a list and tr translate it into a planner pad later, I can into my day book. But so anyway, that's on the front and in inside back cover. I have placed stamps, um, some notes to myself, and some note cards mm -hmm. so that I can always drop a thank you note. Or a love note mm -hmm. to someone. So sweet. In the moment, so. And it's all together with the paper clip that came in the ephemeral packet. Yeah. If you have, or your own clip or binder clip. Yeah. Such a great idea. I love that. And, you know, so the idea with these is you can just insert right. kind of whatever it's helpful. Yeah, mine are gold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I added a little tea uh, collaged piece on there from a tea magazine that I got as a gift subscription. So these are my goals for various things. So from Tranquility Du Jour to mm -hmm. personal ones to Tranquil Space and on the back, Tranquil Space Foundation and Tranquility. So these are like my big goals for 2013. And I just use, these are just little note cards. Adorable. Are they precious? Yeah. And um, they just slide right in. Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, you could use, for those of you who got with the ephemera packet, you got the 10 pink cards. You could also write some goals on those. And so what I did instead is I wrote my word of the year, mm -hmm. and then I tied it with the baker's twine around. So whenever I open my day book, I will see my reminder for spaciousness. Really nice. And I love, you know, with the back I hadn't put anything in yet. Mm -hmm. So I like your idea with the stamps and whatnot, because right now I'm keeping them in my wallet, and that right. would be very handy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's kind of the day book in a nutshell. Let's chat a little bit about the DIY aspect of this and how you can fancy it up in different ways. So from your tabs 
to the paper clips, mm -hmm. to what you put inside the the uh, kind of inner pockets, mm -hmm. to the inspiration pages where you're adding images, and then where you added one and mm -hmm. kind of wrote over it. Right, with the right. The monthly at a glance, and I plan to do that all week, all year, and uh, and have something to look back to and measure my progress and accomplishments. And the different ways you can bind it. So show us yours. I so wanted to have your uh, day book and I love how you found it but I really wanted to have it spiral bound so I took mine to a FedEx office and had them slice it and put this really durable plastic spiral binding on it so I can lay it flat um, and I can fold the page back yeah. and it just seemed to be more workable for me and for the kind of use that I envision. I also wanted to include ribbon for page markers ah. so I could tie them in the very top of the spine and I have two markers, one for the daily checklists and one for the week spread that we're in. So the current week will be measured with this tab. Oh nice! Yeah, so and I really like it and I think they come in different colors. You can have red or white or black um, and I think there are other kinds of bindings too, not just spiral bound, but this is what I really liked. And they fold the, the corners back at the very top so everything stays in place. And um, how much is that to have the... The total for the slicing, hole punching, and assembling was just over $6. Wow. So, so okay. worthwhile. Just pennies, really, through the whole year. Yeah, so, so for people who like the spiral, mm -hmm. the other thing, if you wanted to be super do-it-yourself with the PDF, mm -hmm. you could hole punch it and insert it into a small notebook. They have really cute small, mm -hmm. um, not notebooks, but binders. Right, like three ring binders, smaller yeah. or larger one. You can use the eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and it gives you that extra uh, margin to yes. use for note taking, you know, or whatever. Yeah, you know, yeah. You could also use your crocodile. Right, right? yes. For, for those of you who don't know what a crocodile is, it will poke holes in leather it will poke holes in license plates <laughs> really metal <laughs> it's like intense so super do it yourself super do it yourself but it also works for you know small things too uh, i've used it for cards holiday mm -hmm. cards and then i'll do do my little crocodiling like and then uh do a little ring a little right kind of do you can, can use those for grommets too you could like for covers yeah mm -hmm. yeah so you could so. really kind of turn this into uh, a complete unique representation mm -hmm. of what you want your year to look like. And you know, if you cut it, you can rearrange the pages too. Right. You know, so if you wanted to have the um, the weekly checklists, you know, or the you know the the inspiration pages put in other places in the book, you can really rearrange it, like with the PDF. You know, yeah. you can take those pages. Yeah. And move them. Such a mm -hmm. good point. Yeah. To really do it yourself. Right. One other thing is what we found is this could also be a 14-month planner. So, because what Genius. I ended up doing, <laughs> because what we did is since it's dateless, we put in five weeks for every month because some have much longer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, some are 31, some are not. And so with that, if you go through and just completely line them up, so for example, here's my February. But as you'll see, we've got, January 31st ends on a Thursday, and then I started right into my February 1st on Friday. Mm -hmm. And so since I have aligned mine up like that, this book actually takes me through February 2014, and it takes me through the 23rd of February. So it's it's pretty much eight additional weeks is one way to look at it. Mm -hmm. Or right. you and could I do went, your way. Right. And I went with the 52, because what I did was that I have some months that are long fill the entire five-week page spread. So uh -huh. January ends on the 31st is a Thursday. Then I have February 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. So as the calendar begins with Sunday as the first day, the weekly spread is actually Monday. Ah. So I numbered in the Mondays and making sure that they lined up with the 4, 11, 18, and 25, whatever that month happens to be for you. So February goes several page spreads to the 28th, and then I've got March, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Well, that leaves me with a blank spread because I wanted to have the rest of my March pages fall behind the March tab. Ah, yeah. yeah. So I can tape those pages together. I can use those for extra note taking. Mm -hmm. um, 
enjoy the inspiration or just the spaciousness. Yeah. So if you're a, a super plan ahead like you, you could use really appreciate those extra pay, weeks, I think. Yeah. Right? There's, so there's eight additional yeah. weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we put the five weeks in between for each mm -hmm. month. So, yeah. Yeah. So either way, I really like it. I really love how the paper feels. It's so smooth and luscious. It is luscious. so smooth. Yeah, and one person had asked, uh, you know, what is the best pen to use because theirs was bleeding a little bit. Mm -hmm. And if you use a pen that's really watery, you'll have that. Because one time I used paper like this to write a thank you note. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, it'll be fine. But whenever they got it, it was just a big splash oh, of blur. ink. So, yeah, you have to, like, I love these. These are what come in the ephemera packets. Mm -hmm. These are just the Crayola markers. Love these. Sharpies are really great, too. They just smell a little, but yeah. I do love Sharpies. Yeah, but uh, ballpoint, ballpoint pens, pen. too, and also um, I use pencil for ah. my, cap, my appointment days. I think this is just a big product, but and it has a, an eraser in the cap, and it really works well on the page, too. It's really smooth, and then I don't have a lot of cross-offs. Um, one disadvantage is that it's all the same color. Like, I noticed you color code your days, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just yeah. love to use color, mm -hmm. yeah. But there's not really a rhyme or reason, but you could. Like, mm -hmm. say you wanted, you know, your personal to-dos to be in purple and your work to-dos in blue or whatever. I mean, a lot of people do get really kind of color-coded and what have you. You mm -hmm. can do that. But, yeah, I tend to just add splashes of color so that it doesn't feel so blue ballpoint pen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Not that there's anything wrong Not that there's anything wrong with, with blue ballpoint pen. pen. Yeah. Right. Yeah, can I share another Please. secret of mine is that um, is that I did misnumber some of the days. Uh. So my secret weapon is this whiteout tape that really works well on the smooth pages. You can't even see that it's there. So uh -huh. it's kind of just a cleaner look. So just another tool. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah and I set out just a few tools. I mean, mm -hmm. some is just, you know, collage paper. And of course, just like a plain, beautiful pen. This is a gift from Julia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, of course, the, the tape. I've even added tape in various places throughout the book, um, and I'll continue to add pa tape as I add layers of paper, of collaging, and, um, you know, and then too, like, here's my art journal from 2012, and I just wanted to show this, because this is probably what my day book is going to look like as the year goes on, and as I continue to add more and mm -hmm. more to it. And... I wanted to, oh yeah, I'm pretty ribbon. And yeah, just adding ribbon. I mean, I just put the baker's twine here, but you can definitely add ribbon. And as mm -hmm. you did with the right. spiral right. you created. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so sweet. And um, one last thing. Oh, yeah. Sure I love to keep all the pages together. Do you know what these are? Are they headbands? They're infant headbands uh, from Etsy. Oh Handmade God, uh, you know, from a woman in up upstate New York. Um, on Etsy, and I just love these. Yeah, they're yes. instant headbands. <laughs> I thought they're so inside. sweet. Yeah, and it holds it all together. Yeah, so. sweet. Voila. And um, you know, just a big thank you. First of all, to mm -hmm. Carol who gave You're all welcome. sorts of great feedback on thank this you. and helping with it's, the video. It's so beautiful, it really it's is. So it's sweet gorgeous. and putting together. I love what you've created. Uh -huh. And Mary Catherine's artwork. Gorgeous. So throughout beautiful. here, local artist Mary Catherine Starr, absolutely beautiful work. Check out her website, marycatherinestarr.com. And then, of course, Christy Jenkins, who did the beautiful kind of layout of it all. And just a big thank you to you for supporting this journey, for particularly people who have joined me for Tranquilology this entire year and explored the DIY Guide to Tranquility, Everyday Tranquility. And that's what this daybook is all about. So thank you so much. Please send photos. I've been posting them on my blog as you send photos of you working on it. Many people's pets are mm -hmm. resting on them or participating in the process. So send the photos away along. I'm happy to share. And um, I just have to showcase little Louie. And he's got a little pearl mala made by the lovely Carol. He's been napping throughout our video. <laughs> So wishing you a very happy 2013 and a big thank you for being a part of my life and reading the blog and connecting. Have a great year. Namaste.